After the lagoon route, we headed to the Salt Hotel at the Salar de Uyuni. The hotel is made entirely of salt stones, walls, ceilings, everything. Very impressive. Also, the view over the salt lake. The view from above shows the huge dimensions of the Salar. We really like the markets and the villages along the way. They are always very colorful. After the long drive over tarmac, we turn off to find a cozy place for the night, which we indeed found. But hello, what's happening there? A fairly large herd of llamas emerges from the hills, accompanied by their shepherds. Always a beautiful spectacle. We like these animals that can look so wonderfully arrogant. In bright sunlight, this little village surprises us with an unexpected performance of that special kind. Unfortunately, we didn't find out what exactly it was about, but whatever, it was so pretty. We simply can't get enough of the endless expanses of the Bolivian highlands. According to the map and the navigation system, we have to go straight on, straight through the village, so we can get to our next junction. Everything seems to be in order so far. Turn left, clear instructions. We're both thinking who, but that probably can't be the case. What a crappy road. We then reach the bypass road more than well shaken. How embarrassing! Navigating isn't always easy, but so beautiful routes like this one are rewarding in return. But you always have to be careful. There can be a surprise waiting behind every turn. In addition to surprises, there are also beautiful views, mountains and great colors lurking behind every curve. We have chosen a special route for the next stage. We leave the large main road and turn into a small valley which will then lead us over a pass onto a smaller side road, almost parallel to the main road. At first the dirt road winds comfortably up the hill. The serpentines quickly become narrower, which Globi, with its length, then has to tackle with the usual forward-backward maneuvers. Peter almost does this in his sleep. But I'll probably never get used to these looks into the depth. That 
that's why I'm always diligent about getting out. Oh man, how lucky we are. Now we can sneak past the construction trucks here too. I especially love that. Driving through the small mining village of Japo really calms my blood pressure. Although beautiful is something different. And somehow I feel sorry for the miners' families who have to live in this rather desolate environment. Outside the village, we reach an abandoned ghost village. Dead end. We can't go any further. We have to turn around. So, back to the big road. It's definitely not what we wanted, but such aberrations are part of the journey. In return, this road of the past is new, wide and well-developed. At least up to the top of the pass. Here we are allowed to pay heavily so that the other side will be expanded so incredibly at some point as well. Almost a bit too much in our opinion, but it is an important north-south connection with a lot of truck and bus traffic. We notice that we are steadily going downwards not just because of the road, but also because we've been seeing trees again. In addition to the very colorful rocks, this is our highlight of this route. We are slowly approaching Cochabamba. However, since it is already late and we don't feel like driving into the big city in the evening, we decide to spend another night beforehand. And that works quite well here, right next to the viaduct. Obviously, even at provincial borders, there are certain formalities that need to be completed, but showing ID is enough. On the way into town, we are first greeted by a car fire. Ooh, hopefully there is no one left in there. Then we quickly head into the outer parts of the city and the GPS takes us along very strange streets, but at least straight to the hotel. Where the next challenge, the extremely narrow entrance, awaits us. We would never have ended up here if we hadn't needed help with our computer problems, which luckily worked out well. And the exit also went better than expected. Sometimes you just have to be a little bit fortunate. And of course you need a good driver. The hotel porter was visibly relieved that we made it. Thank God the route out of Cochabamba was much easier. Lots of traffic, but good roads. Everything's great as long as a bus doesn't try to push you out of your lane. Without looking, just drive over. Man, oh man, that was really close. I won't repeat here what I shouted after the nice bus driver. It's a very special tactic to simply drive in the middle of both lanes, so at least no one can get in your way. No matter, we're out and that's fine. 